Hello, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Welcome to today's live level up conversation, whether you're tuning in live or catching me on replay. Thank you so much for joining me. I hope you're having a great day. Let's dive right in. Welcome to Level Up with Winnie Sun. Market Updates. Speed Round. Award winning financial pro. And now, get ready. I present to you Level Up with Winnie Sun. Hi friends, I'm Winnie Sun, your host today and a CNBC council member and contributor and a Forbes contributor as well. It is great to be here with you. We are streaming live on many different social media platforms. So if you're with me today, come in, say hello. We'd love to see where you're joining me from today. And of course, how's the weather in your neighborhood? I'm joining you from Southern California. If you didn't know, we've been having some stormy weather and today the sun has broken through. So it's a good day. We'll take it for what it is. Let's update you on how the market is doing. And speaking of good days so far, it's looking pretty nice too. The Dow is currently up over 200 points, up 206 points right now. The NASDAQ is up 143 as well. Well, I like the, the sound of that. And the S&P 500 is up 42 as well. So, so far, all in the green. Let's, con let's hope it continues. Okay. So let's segue to what's going on and some of the trending business news I want to share with you today. I picked a few articles and hopefully they're of interest to you. I think that right now, as we've talked about in 2024, a lot has changed, right? There's been a lot of... Um, challenges. Of course, we're hoping to see the Fed uh, decrease interest rates. We didn't get that news this week or last week. And of course, you know, mortgage rates have come down a little bit. We're hoping they come down even more so. But one of the big stories that we've been talking about all of January and all of 2024 so far is really how many people have been laid off from companies across the United States. Now, typically the end of the year, the last quarter is where we see much of the layoff activities for corporations, but this year seems to be a little different. In fact, uh, DocuSign has just announced that they are laying off 6% of their workforce. Sounds like a lot. I mean, um, this was reported uh, on CNBC by Ashley Kapoor, but you know, DocuSign, many of you know, you may have used it to have to sign like documents for work or um, any contracts that you're doing. Well, they're Definitely reducing staff. This is part of the strategic restructuring um, plan. They've let go over 400 employees. This is really tough, right? People are then having to figure out how they're going to make rent and mortgage payments and pay for their bills and then have to find new work in the time where it's just, you know, that kind of stress just is something I think we can all agree we just don't need more of. But this discussion comes, or this dis decision has, of course, come in light because of the recent SEC filing, which talked about currently they have about over 7,000 employees, but they're really taking a look at areas of laying off, especially in the marketing areas and sales. And you, you would think maybe they were impacted by AI, but typically sales and marketing are areas that, you know, really need that human component. But the, the stock itself definitely uh, was impacted by that. But the company is anticipating restructuring efforts uh, to that they say will be fully implemented by the end of next year, maybe second fiscal quarter. And they're hoping to meet or surpass their previous stated guidance for their fourth quarter. And of course, it all comes down the numbers. So unfortunately, employees are being cut. Now, if you um, have been cut and you're like not sure what to do, know that there's resources out there for you. And then this is something that we've done for many, many years with many, many clients across the board. And it's something that just remember, if you go through this, there are people that can help you through this. And, you know, beef up on that LinkedIn um, profile and put yourself as being able to be open to work and a lot of opportunities hopefully will come your way as well. All right. So hang in there for those of you affected. Now on to my next story. And this is a big one. I'm really curious to see how y'all you feel about this because I thought this was kind of interesting. Uh, this is about the one and only Meta, what, as you know, previously as Facebook. Um, this come out just um, article actually was reported from the Meta newsroom. In fact, um, Nick Clegg talking about Meta is now Facebook, you know, Instagram, all that, Threads. 
They're now going to collaborate with industry partners on standards for identifying AI-generated content. And they're planning to not just identify it, but also label it so that you would know. So images on Instagram, Facebook, threads, if they're AR generated, they're gonna make sure that it's labeled that way so you know what's real and isn't real. And that certainly sounds like a good idea. Um, and it, I'm sure those who are on one of the meta properties would think that's a good idea. The question is how long will that sustain itself? And are they the only platform that's going to do this or are other platforms going to follow as well? Of course, you know, there's been a lot of talk about like, AI helping to write content and generate content. And is it something where it can constantly be labeled? That's my question to you. Because yes, you know, it would be helpful to know like which one was human written or human written with AI benefits or completely AI written um, content. And then of course, images as well. But is it sustainable? I guess that's my question. Or is it get to get to a point where we're just going to have to accept the fact that AI probably had some input in a lot of things that you're seeing out there and if that's going to be okay. So the Meta's labeling initiative is really set to begin in the coming months. And the goal is, of course, to educate users like ourselves who are on the platforms across all languages, in fact, um, of, you know, this, especially during significant global events like elections, they need to be able to sort of have that um, visible marker or invisible watermark, and, and they're going to have em, embedded metadata to signify AI-generated content so that um, this adheres to their responsible AI usage practices that they've committed to. So once again, AI is certainly a hot topic wondering how we're going to live with this, how we're going to work with this, and at what stage will it be acceptable to include AI into the workplace and into like now they're talking about politics and social media and everything else. So I'm curious to see how you feel. If you're watching this at some point, let me know. Put in comments or reply to me, send me a direct message. Let me know about your thoughts. I actually put a question on Twitter slash X just recently about, you know, tell me what you think about AI. And it was really interesting because I would say 50% of the people who commented were very excited about AI. And then the other 50% said, I have concerns. And these are my concerns. And some of those concerns, many of the concerns, I haven't even thought about. So it was, it was really interesting and rich to get a lot of um, this discussion going and to hear people's thoughts it really was quite opening. Uh, so eye-opening for sure. And speaking of eye-opening, I'm going to go over to my next story that I want to share with you. Get this. Now, this is shared by the New York Times, um, this article talking about the Super Bowl. Now, we've talked about the Super Bowl before, about how expensive tickets have gotten, especially with the whole Taylor Swift effect with who is now AKA Travis Kelsey's girlfriend, who will be uh, attending this year's Super Bowl, along with other politicians and their notable celebrities and whatnot. But get this, advertising has also become much more expensive. Now, the question for you is, how much is too much? Is $7 million too much? And the question is, maybe, maybe not. Maybe it just isn't. With a consistent $7 million price tag for a 30-second, 30 30-second, 30 not even a whole minute, Super Bowl ad spot, companies such as Bud Light, Oreo, Hellman's Mayo, many other brands are stepping up because they want to showcase, obviously, their products, right, to the, to the huge anticipated Super Bowl audience. Um, and they're really thinking this is going to be the year where they're getting maximum viewer engagement because not only are you getting that typical huge NFL Super Bowl audience, right? And then those who go and are really looking forward to the halftime show, me included. And then this year, let's not forget the Taylor Swift effect of all the Swifties. And so that younger, maybe female audience, that's, this is going to be a big, big year for this Super Bowl. Now, despite sort of a more cautious approach to marketing budgets and slowdown that we've been seeing the last few years, especially with the pandemic, the Super Bowl, though, remains a premium op opportunity for brands to reach a wide audience. And this year, 
probably bigger than ever. So the Super Bowl has distinguished itself as a singular event capable of drawing mass, mass, massive viewership. And this year's viewership, like we said, is just expected to grow. So interesting enough, it's not just your typical Bud Light type of brands, right? Because of the rise in female viewership, partly, I would say not just partly, but probably a big part of it attributed to Taylor Swift's visibility at NFL games because of her support to her boyfriend. This is opening new marketing avenues for brands such as those in the health and beauty brand space, right? Which really sort of is showing a shift in the typical or historical Super Bowl audience demographics. Very, very interesting. The other thing they're doing now, they're doing these interactive elements in advertising, like including QR codes. By the way, can I just say, it wasn't that long ago when people were saying that QR codes were dead, but QR codes are definitely not dead, right? They're being used in a big way now. So now inter Active ads are going to be including QR codes and ads, which demonstrates the company's efforts to enhance engagement. And they want to be able to measure the impact effectively. We think companies are getting a lot smarter. They're just not going to spend like $7 million. They want to make sure that they get something to prove to their shareholders and their companies and their boards and, you know, the executive staff that, yes, this money was well spent. So if it can't translate directly and very quickly into new product sales, right? Because sometimes that just takes a little bit longer. At least they can see the engagement and how many people actually are looking and taking that step of scanning the QR code and, you know, I don't know, grabbing the coupon code, whatever it may be. So it's really, really interesting times. But I'm curious to see your thoughts on $7 million for 30 seconds. You think it's worth it? We'll see. Okay, and talking about things that I think are really interesting, and I think this is like welcome news to a lot of people, but for me, it's definitely a well, wait and see thing, and that is Jack Dorsey's Blue Sky. Now, Jack Dorsey, as you know, you know, previously head of Twitter before it was sold away to Elon Musk, and now it's become X. Well, Jack Dorsey has built sort of a, I call it like Twitter 2.0 experience called Blue Sky. Now, Blue Sky... Um, I have been on Blue Sky for a bit. I will tell you I haven't used it that much, but I have been on it for a bit um, because it was by invitation only. So I got an invitation, was using it for a little bit, and you know, most of my community is on the other platform, so I didn't spend so much time on it. But I think that could change very quickly because it has now just this week open to the public. You no longer need an invitation. This is reported by Tech, uh, Tech Crunch by Amanda Silverling. And previously, it was an invite-only app and was funded by Twitter co-founder Jack Dorsey. Now it has officially, you know, opened the doors to everybody, to the public. So they're promising a alternative to the existing social platforms such as X, which is now owned by Elon Musk. So with its launch to the general public, Blue Sky is now very, very interesting because the question is, will they succeed, right? There's already been, a, there's already so many companies in the social media space competing to try and take over some of X's market share, such as Threads, which is owned by Meta, right? Um, Mastodon, which already has like 130 million people. Wait, 130 million, I think it's on Threads. 1.8 million, I think is on Mastodon monthly active users. But Blue Sky says it's gonna be di different. It's gonna be different. Um, they're gonna use different infrastructures and protocols um, and they're going to allow for open source development and they're going to give people like you and I users um, and more access to be able to develop greater transparency and also give us more control over our social media experience, which I'll be honest, it sounds great, you know, and it certainly is going to encourage me to go spend a little bit more time there and to learn more of their features and things that they've added and see if my community is there as well. And perhaps we can even, you know, maybe we can even do some hashtag activities over there, which would be very, very interesting. Nonetheless, yes, 
The news for you though is it is currently open. If you haven't been on yet, check it out. It's blue, like blue, the color, and then sky, one word. Um, it is now open to the public. And supposedly, it's committed to sort of user-driven innovation and safety spotlight is a big thing. And talk about timing. I mean, today, this year is the big 2024 election. I imagine this could be um, very, very busy on that platform as well because you know, we know what's happened to Twitter during the elections, very busy as well. And speaking of Twitter slash X, I want to uh, invite you to something else that's happening in literally 15 minutes here. I want you to join us today uh, at 11 a.m. Pacific or 2 p.m. Eastern, or basically in 15 minutes, whatever your time zone is, for the Love What You Do hashtag Winnie Sun tweet chat. And we're gonna talk about passion led profits, purpose, and of course, being in love with your business and what you're doing and your career and all things, you know, all things work. We're featuring the um, the powerhouse mega brain, Suzanne Brown, also known as mom empowerment. She's amazing. I've had a chance to be, her, you know, to, ha to spend time with her the last few years on our tweet chats. I consider her a friend. She's incredible. She really is incredible. She also writes for, um, the Harvard business review. I believe she's just like one smart, smart lady. And I think you're going to really enjoy to meet her today. I hope you'll join us. So all you need to do is jump on Twitter or X and search for hashtag Winnie Sun. And like a couple minutes before the hour, we'll start tweeting and you can respond and you can answer questions or you can just sit back and relax. It's one of the nicest, friendliest crowds there are on social media. So I will tell you this, if you join us, you will make some friends. So some good, good, great human beings that join us every, almost every week. And we would love to see you there. Let's go ahead and take a look at the market. Again, right now, the Dow is currently up 170 points. The NASDAQ is up 139 points. And the S&P 500 is also up 38 points as well. And the market hasn't closed yet. Of course, we've got a, uh, almost a couple hours left before it does. But let's hope... The green continues and we end on a very positive day. And with that, it's been a positive day for me because I've got to spend a little time with you today. Thank you so much for being part of Level Up. If you don't mind, please hit that like button and subscribe so you get updated content. And of course, we have a lot coming up as well. And you can always watch full episodes of Level Up with Winnie Sun on NASDAQ, Amazon Fire, Samsung, LG, and Roku. And of course, if you do share this show on social, please tag at Winnie Sun so I can show um, a big thanks to you on a future episode. Thank you so much for all of you who are on currently and who have done that. I really, really thank you very much much. And of course, you can always listen to Yes Factor with Winnie Sun, which is on Apple Podcasts or wherever you tune into your podcast. And that's with the LinkedIn Podcast Network. So thank you, my friends. Be well, take care, and I will see you on X hopefully in 14 minutes now. And then I'll look forward to seeing you on Friday for In the Loop with Greg Nibbler. Take care now. Be well. Bye-bye.